The aim of this audiovisual presentation is to provide clear guidance for the accurate completion of the patient care report. Recording pre-hospital care interventions and medications administered to patients is an essential clinical responsibility of all pre-hospital emergency care practitioners. Every responder and practitioner must provide clear, accurate and comprehensive patient care information. The PCR is a two-part pocket-sized report comprising ten coloured panels and folded in such a way that the written information flows easily from panel to panel without having to open it out. On the top copy, the following is recorded. Incident information, patient demographic information, clinical information, vital observations, medication treatment, care management, continuity of care, clinical audit, emergency department handover signature, and additional information. The second copy has four additional panels on the back for use by the practitioner to record the following. Out of hospital cardiac arrest, declined treatment and or transport, and additional information. PCRs must be completed in the following circumstances. All emergency calls, all urgent calls, all calls where a practitioner has to treat a patient, all calls involving declined treatment and or transport, all calls where a patient is treated at the scene but not transported. The PCR must be completed in real time or as close to the event as possible. The PCR identifies the care that has been provided by you and if not completed soon after the event, may lack accuracy due to difficulties in recall. However, in cases of major trauma or immediate critical care, patient care will always take precedent over full completion of the PCR. A properly completed PCR will give protection to you and will be an essential aid if called in court as a witness. Remember one golden rule of documentation. If it isn't written down, it didn't happen. The information on the PCR can be divided into two principal categories. One relates to the health of the patient and the other relates to you and the activities of your organisation. It is vital that each PCR provides as much reliable information as possible. The usefulness of the information directly reflects the level of completeness and accuracy of the data captured. Entering information comprises of free text and tick boxes entered in the panels. Incident information. The date of the call is the day on which the call is received by the communication centre. When entering time, always use the 24-hour clock. There are a number of key times to be entered in this section which are principally used for the collection and measurement of response time details. Dispatch classification reference. A dispatch classification reference will be provided by the communication centre when a call is processed using the medical dispatch priority system. For example, 9 echo 1 suffix A will be entered as follows. Priority response. Priority response is a response given to you by the communication centre. This is in line with the FEC priority dispatch standard. Tick box as appropriate. Interfacility patient transfer. The interfacility patient transfer information will be entered as follows. E for mobile intensive care transfer, D for acute emergent care transfer, C for non-acute emergent care transfer, B for non-acute care transfer, and A for ambulatory patient. This is in line with the FEC Interfacility Patient Transfer Standard, tick box as appropriate. Unique identifier. The unique identifier constitutes four separate elements, which creates one unique number. The first element is the communication centre code. The second element is the incident number generated by the communication centre. And the third element is the vehicle call sign. The fourth element, A, B or C, corresponds to the first, second or third patient in the case where there is more than one patient involved in the same incident. FEC pin numbers. In answer to concerns raised about the use of signatures on PCRs, all practitioners must record their PIN as per the FEC register when completing the PCR. 
Station code. Record the allocated code from where the vehicle was dispatched. Type of call. Dead on arrival. Treat and transfer. Not treated, transported. Tick box as appropriate. DAO or dead on arrival should be completed using the following options. Recognition of death. Cessation of resuscitation. Transported. TOR or treat and refer. This section is to be completed by paramedics and advanced paramedics who have completed a treat and refer program. NTT are not treated or transported refers to the following. Treatment declined, transport declined, stood down. Tick box as appropriate and complete the declined treatment and or transport section on the back of the PCR. Incident location, incident address. The type of incident location should also be indicated. For example, home, street or road, etc. If the location is the same as home address, tick box provided. Nature and identity of assistance prior to arrival of practitioner. Nature of assistance should indicate the type of assistance given by another, if any, before the arrival of the ambulance. If CPR was carried out or AED was used, it is necessary to complete the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest section on the back of the PCR. Identity of assistance should identify the person who provided assistance prior to the arrival of the ambulance and the clinical level of their skill. Patient information. In the patient information panel, all patient demographic details should be entered as appropriate. For example, to enter a date, use numbers. The 6th of July 2010 is 06072010. If the number is a single digit, it must be preceded by a zero. Enter time as a 24-hour entry. For example, a quarter past six in the evening is 1815. Date of birth. Enter the age in weeks, months and years as appropriate. Where entering an age, record as follows. 2 over 52 equals 2 week old infant. 8 over 12 equals 8 months old. 22 equals 22 year old. Tick box appropriate for gender. The address is recorded as the permanent or usual residence of the patient. Other significant addresses, such as for those on holidays or in temporary accommodation, should be recorded in additional information. Record the name and telephone number of the patient's next of kin our nearest relative or guardian, who can be contacted if necessary. Also record the name of the patient's GP. Clinical information. The clinical information section records details such as the patient's chief complaint, primary survey, clinical impression, the ample history details, the mechanism of injury and circumstances, and clinical status. Complete these sections by ticking box or boxes as appropriate. Always remember that written reports must be objective and not include opinions or value judgments by the practitioner responder. Any opinion that is not supported by fact should be avoided. Clinical impression. The clinical impression of the presenting illness or injury is based on the combination of information available to the practitioner responder following assessment of patient. To enter, Tick box or boxes as appropriate and, if necessary, free text may also be added. The ample history includes the following. Record allergies if known to the patient or tick box as appropriate. Record medications as recounted by the patient or as seen by you. Tick a box or boxes as appropriate. The patient's compliance with medication should also be ascertained. You must establish if the patient is on any medications that may interact with others. Record past medical history. This is the relevant medical history reported by the patient or next of kin or noted on assessment. Tick a box as appropriate. Record last intake. This is a record of food or drink last taken and the time as recounted by the patient. Record event and mechanism of injury. The event information gives a summary of the event or activity of the patient immediately prior to the incident or injury as assessed by you and are recounted by the patient. Remember, there is always an event or activity associated with each incident or injury.
Mechanism of injury. This describes the mechanism by which the injury occurred as assessed by you. Tick a box or boxes as appropriate to indicate. If a road crash has occurred, use the diagram to describe the impact on the vehicle and the location of the occupants. In the Circumstances panel, give your best assessment possible of the circumstances under which the event occurred based on scene assessment and patient clinical findings. Tick box as appropriate. The event, mechanism of injury and incident location is translated into International Classification of Diseases Codes, ICD 10 AM. This will facilitate data comparisons with other ambulance services, both nationally and internationally, and with hospitals and health facilities. This will also facilitate a process of continuous improvement in pre-hospital emergency care education and patient care standards. Clinical status. This section refers to the clinical status of the patient following assessment by the practitioner and prior to handover to an emergency department or any other facility. Vital observations. There are four columns on which to enter patient observations, and if there is a requirement to record a further set, this should be recorded in additional information. Enter observations as appropriate and record the time completed. Medication treatment. Record the name of the medication administered, time given, dose, route, and the pin of the practitioner. If administered by a doctor, he or she must enter DOR in this section and enter the name in additional information or enter FEC PIN. Care Management Tick each care management section and record the PIN number of the practitioner. In the event of a cardiac arrest, complete the Out of Hospital Cardiac Arrest section on the back of the PCR. Continuity of Care if care is handed over to a practitioner not previously engaged in the patient's care, then the receiving practitioner enters the time of the handover and PIN. If intervention is performed by a practitioner not previously engaged in the patient care, then tick the information box followed by the PIN and the time of intervention. Record the intervention in the care management section. Additional information. In the additional information section, record any information which you deem to be relevant to this episode of care and for which there was either insufficient space or no appropriate section. Clinical Audit Clinical Audit is a quality improvement process that seeks to improve patient care and outcomes. Tick the CA panel in the event of there being a strength or weakness on this patient incident worthy of highlighting or in the event of an issue that requires follow-up and discussion. The Clinical Audit Strength and Weaknesses Identification Criteria are as follows. Appropriateness Timing Skills or knowledge, equipment, communications, documentation, and any other issue deemed appropriate. Record in additional information as appropriate. On the back of the second copy of the PCR are the following sections Out of hospital cardiac arrest, declined treatment and/or transport. A list of abbreviations used in this report for root, cardiac rhythm and medications. A pupil size chart and additional information space if required. Out of hospital cardiac arrest. This panel must be completed by the practitioner in all cases where a cardiac arrest has occurred. Information gathered here is very important for the collection of national out of hospital cardiac arrest data. Cardiac first response report. In the case where a cardiac first response report has been completed, tick yes and hand over the top copy of the cardiac first response report to the hospital destination facility. Declined treatment and or transport. Where a patient declines treatment and or transport, determine patient decision making capacity and select the appropriate tick box. Enter PIN and report to the communication center. As part of the handover of the patient at the receiving hospital or destination facility, the top copy of the completed PCR is handed over to the health professional who takes over responsibility for the patient. The second copy is retained by the ambulance service. How to deal with errors in the entry of information. Errors should be addressed as follows. Cross through the incorrect entry with one line only. 
initial the correction and write the correction close to the error or use an arrow to clarify the correction. Do not obliterate an error or do not use correction fluid. You have now successfully completed your patient care report, which will contribute in a very significant way to ensuring that high quality health information is available to support the highest standard of care being delivered to the patient.